Welcome back to the Pipe and Tobacco Talk podcast. It's episode 32. We've had a little bit of a sabbatical, but don't worry. Tim is here to read us the MBSD warning, Prop 69 warning. Tim. Warning, listeners. This uh, episode is going to be chock full of insensitive, off-putting, and otherwise downright gross content. If you're squeamish at all, you've been forewarned. You can either turn it off or grow a pair. Nah, a way, Tim. There you have it. L- there let you them have know it. exactly. Yeah, you know. How you been? We we have been away for a little bit. Uh, t- Tim um, decided that he needed to take his wife to Arizona for two weeks. Oh, so man. yeah. 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 Well, we had, yeah, since the, uh, uh, that, that, uh, nonsense that, uh, we put out at the last podcast when, um, uh, it's not my fault that, uh, it went so badly, you know, Reed, um, I would, I would apologize to him, but you know, his wife was the one that kept feeding me Manhattans. So oh. I have only okay. heard of blame. They okay. were delicious by the way, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and and apparently you had had more than a handful because well and there was a there was a nice uh, tidy little brewery across the street from the Briar Works and um we went there for a little tune up before the um uh, before the podcast and uh uh Dan Reese came by and uh he helped us sample some of the wares over there okay and um uh, so and it was you know it was a long day of uh Drinking beer and uh, enjoying tobacco, and then uh, Manhattan's on top of that. And so, you know, what more can you expect than what you saw in that uh, morass of nonsense that <laughs> we put out? <laughs> the, the train wreck unfolded. And it, what was amazing <laughs> is is that so we got Anthony from Castle Briars, who I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the show. You got right. Jeremy Reeves. Uh, you got Lady Silver and her husband, whose name eludes me, and I've talked to him before, and I feel terrible. I can't remember his name. And right. then Jody Davis. They just all kept, you know, all these people that I know kept walking by you. Hey, hey how you doing? Hey, what's going on? I know. And I know. we asked Reed. I think they... Go, ahead. Go ahead. No, no. This is where we caused no, Caleb. I think that they were sure. They... I know. <laughs> I think what they were hoping, they kept looking. I'm like, is this guy done yet? Who is this guy? Get him the hell out of our apartment. He's drinking all our booze. <laughs> he's, he's, he's drinking, drinking all, all of our, our booze. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> he's just generally making a pain in the ass out of himself. Yeah. Get him yeah. out of here. I, and, you know, we were rolling right along, and you just get up and go, oh, that's it. I'm done. That's it. It's over. And it's like, click. And it's like, I'm just sitting here by myself. It was over. Like, oh. yeah. I know. So I know. who did you get? To, let's talk about Mule Town. Uh, we, we have absolutely scorched our guest list and we're terribly sorry so rob dickey was supposed to be on uh and he had to he went out of town and had to cancel on us uh which was episode 31 we ended up talking to reed who was supposed to be on a previous episode uh but he couldn't get on with his track phone um and then we missed jack ryan and Corey brown we're going to reschedule both of those and have them this coming week uh april April 7th or 8th, whatever day we record on. And we're recording it's Tuesday night, by the way. We didn't want to record on uh, April Fool's Day because... Uh, Anything could happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Stacy Maharin... Well, Easter Sunday. We didn't do it Easter Sunday. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's... Hey, take time away from your family to talk to two, two half-drunk idiots. So... And I'm very <laughs> excited because when we have Stacy on, uh, I will have a bottle of Irish Red Breast. Uh, to enjoy because I gave up uh, spirits uh, and alcohol for lint, and I have been lifted of that as of Sunday. Uh, but we will have Stacy from uh, Maharin from Maharin Bespoke Works, and then uh, the 14th we have Simon from LCS Briars. We'll have to record that one probably sometime early in the day, uh, given right. the monumental time change. Yep. Uh, and then Mark Berg from Berg, Berg Handwork Pipes. Neil Monet, Garage Made Pipe Tools, Mark Dominguez from Lone Star Briars, and Ian Fisher for Fisher Pipes, and that takes us to May 12th. So let's yeah. talk about Mule Town. Who did you get? I, I know that Dan Reeves was there because he posted a ton of pictures. Who else did you get to talk to? Oh, geez. Well, um, our buddy uh, Rich Epley, EP Pipes, oh. he sat next to me. Oh, man, he was killing me. 
busting me up. He is um, so damn funny. I, I just oh god, he was killing me, just killing me. And uh, let's see, uh, Ben Smith was there. Um, got to talk to him. I okay. made a pipe for him and um, uh, delivered it, and finally got a chance to meet him. He was uh, the Invisible Man. Every time we tried to have a conversation with him, we couldn't get him. Yeah, couldn't get his image darkness. up on the screen. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So he does have a face, and um, I'll remember it. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, oh man, uh, the folks from um, Missouri Mearsham were there. Um, oh, nice. Uh, Reed, as you know. Uh, 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 all these names, I could see faces and then names, uh, words hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Math bad. Yeah. Kevin Math, Foster, was he there? Was Kevin, Kevin Foster. Foster. That's what I was uh, grasping for, Kevin Foster. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, Jason uh, Patrick? Uh, he was not, well, he he showed up as a guest just to, oh. uh, he didn't exhibit, He uh, but he came to uh, spend time with everybody, which was nice. We had a really nice um, reception. Uh, my brothers and I, mm-hmm. uh, we drove down um, to Southern Ohio, part of the way, and then finished the second day driving down. But on the way down, we stopped in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, and we were hosted by Rob Summerall, oh, very Sam nice. Sullivan at uh, Sully's Garage. Sam's got this great uh, garage that has... Uh, flat screen TVs, a bar, um, and man, anything you could want. They they put together a uh, a spread of food, and uh, so we had libations and uh, lunch. We hung out there for about four hours, and then continued our journey. Um, I haven't talked to Robin forever, and I'm I got to correct that. So, yeah, yeah, that is, it was just great. Um, they, uh, they're so gracious, you know, they put all this food out for us and, and, uh, you know, just special, just high, kind of hanging out, waiting for us. So yeah. now I actually got to was, see one of your brothers, Tim, who kind of popped up like a land shark in the background. Which yeah. brother was that in episode 31? That's, uh, that's my, the oldest one. Um, he, he was the, uh, surprisingly, you know, he was the result and, uh, they didn't, kill any of us in the crib they should have huh really so you know, he was oh. the the wow okay so yeah. you know there's no accounting for judgment you know people mm-hmm. make mistakes and you know sometimes yeah. when you make the same mistake over and over again um yeah my parents made seven so really oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah no, my my parents had me and thought, oh, it can't be this bad twice." Yeah, well, then they got my <laughs> sister, and they were wrong. <laughs> Man, were they wrong? <laughs> yeah. And they think oh. constantly, "Should have rethought yeah. that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And I love my sister to death, but she's one of those where heaven is not going to take her, and hell is convinced she's going to take over. So, gonna let yeah. that go. And she- She's like, I just I got to find out. Is it a dry heat? I got to find out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you so got anyway, to... we, yeah, we did did all that. Um, and, you know, Mule Town is, uh, it was, this is my second year there. Um, mm-hmm. It was just a great time. Just a great yeah. time. Very now, relaxed. Did you, did you buy ahead. any pipes while you were there? Do you have some something you know new? What, to... I, did some some trading. Um, I made a pipe for Dan Reese, and Dan made this for me. Oh, very so cool! He gave me a nice pipe. It's a good smoker, and it has the silhouette of the state of Ohio in the shank. No kidding! How the hell did yeah. you do that? Well, you know, he's uh, he's got the magic. Yeah. But the uh, the finish on this thing is just excellent, man. I just love this pipe. Uh, you know, I got that pipe from Dan uh, a, a little while back, and I just love it. I, I have, you know, two from Dan, and th- they're just great smokers. You know, just, uh, uh, you know, his work is definitely unique. It's definitely interesting. And, and like I said, they both smoke like champs. So, well yeah. done, Mr. Reese. So, yeah. yeah. 
So, you know, and Saturday, as uh, usual, Saturday was just a, he was elbow to elbow. Yeah, I, uh, he, uh, Pete Provost day. from Mule Town, um, I, I, I don't know what the name of the place, he was on with Briar Jay Works. and Briarworks. He was on yeah. with uh, Jay and Mike on the Pipe and Tamper on their latest episode, and apparently they had 518 paid in attendance, which yes. has just got to be a, a crowd. I mean, yeah, it stop. was, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was intense and it was just, you know, all day until about three o'clock. It, it just really, it pumped all day. And then, um, you know, the, I had the, uh, the afternoon and the evening that I described when we first started here. So Sunday, um, uh, I, I was not, uh, any too spry on Sunday. And then, you know, <laughs> and luckily it was very light on Sunday. It always is. Shows are yeah. late on Sunday. But uh, about um, 11 o'clock, um, you know, they had a one really good IPA. It was a local IPA on draft there. And I told my brother, you better go get us a couple of those because they're going to blow that keg pretty soon, which he did. And that, that was good. Good that we did that. Yeah. Um, and um, that, and I started to straighten up after that. Well, every now and then you have to have a little of the hair of the dog that bit you. So yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm a firm believer that that works. So. Yep. And, and by did. the way, um, you, you got a great mention in uh, the last episode of Get Piped. We were talking about the Mule Town show that uh, Adam was there and was right. really wanting to buy one of your pipes, and he was just, uh, you know, he he wanted to buy it so bad, and you know. Time. So you got to let me know what pipe you wanted so I can buy it so I can just keep my streak going. So, <laughs> well, um, yeah, I got a chance to talk to him a bit. Um, let's see, what else was? Uh, I don't know. Rich Epley was just uh, every time, every encounter with that guy. Um, uh, oh, he's hilarious. End up just in stitches. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, Hoosier Piper uh, was there. You see him oh, okay. on Instagram, yeah. And we got to talk a lot. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Um, Did you get to see Jay, uh, Jay, uh, Justin, and Nate from Pipe Yes, Wars and Justin Pills? and Nate were there. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping uh, Justin. He was uh, he was hobbling. Said yeah, his hip he, was hurting him. Yeah, he's got some medical issues. He's talked about it on the podcast, and I know that he's he's trying to lose some weight, and I think he's lost like forty some pounds. So, good on him. Yeah, he was really. I saw him walking up the uh, the ramp coming into the thing. I said, "What'd you do? Fall in the storm sewer?" No, no, I got a bad hip. Poor guy. He's too young for that shit. Yeah, you get to be our yeah. age, and you get stuff like yeah. this. I know. Look, <laughs> bionic oh. man. No, oh, yeah. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I have been absolutely hobbled by this. So anyway, well, anyway well, just to finish up, wrap up, then we left there and uh, headed home, got home about, I think on Monday sometime. And then uh, by the end of the week, I and my bride for her uh, 70th birthday. 70. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, you, yeah. you don't say that's the quiet part. You don't say that out loud. <laughs> you could have just said her birthday. It was, it's just us guys. <laughs> you won't tell, will you? No, I won't. But, but our fives of <laughs> listeners might. I know. Yeah. But I can hear down there go, what did he say? Yeah. Uh, I, I heard my name mentioned. No, no. <laughs> no, no. I, and you uh, ran off to? We went to uh, Arizona. And <sighs> um, we uh, were there for 10 days. We saw everything that I think it was worth seeing in Arizona. Probably put. Yeah. Uh, I told you that we put forty five hundred miles on the car. There's no way. Yeah. That's that was. I, I calculated it though, and it was probably close to two thousand miles though. Yeah. Because we were up and down the state a couple of times. The only thing that we didn't go see was the uh, the giant crater in Winslow and the um, the uh, petrified forest. We didn't go okay. east. Yeah. But uh, everything else we saw. So, okay. And we took in a couple of baseball games too. Oh, really? Um, yeah, we saw the uh, the Guardians in Cincinnati at their um, spring training uh, home yeah. field. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then we uh, went to the 
uh, Diamondbacks Stadium, and we saw Cleveland get their asses whipped in a oh. bad way there. And uh, so that it was just good. It was a good, good vacation. Now I'm back, and I've got um, two sets of bearings out there. One f for my uh, that arrived. One for my um, set for my lathe, and then another mm -hmm. set for my table saw. I'm building some cabinets for my daughter, and the last time I ran the table saw, I was making a hell of a squealing sound. So I've got some wrenching I got to do to get back up on beam so I can get, mm -hmm. get cracking again. Well, a, a safety kit make. tip for all you kids at home, unplug your tools before you start working on them. That's just. <laughs> right. <laughs> Three finger Bob taught me that, and I just wanted to share. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, you know, I, I have a friend that got love and hate tattooed on his fingers, you know, the like across uh -huh. the, and he, yeah, yeah. He, he accidentally lost his pinky in an accident, so now he's love hat. So I thought, you know, that's... <laughs> as opposed to ass hat. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to of hat or of hate, you know. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so anyway. that's the update. That's the update. Excellent. Oh, and then one one other thing from the... Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, segue into this quickly. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Aaron... Uh, from um, uh, Pathfinder Pipes. Mm -hmm. He donated this pipe. Oh. Okay. Very cool. Tiny little Billy. Uh, very nice little pipe. Um, it's only an ounce. Very light. Oh, uh, white, very nice. Looks like white acrylic, but it's very purline. Um, he's got a, uh, a sandblasted uh, finish on this. Uh, a nice bead around the uh, the shank. Uh, gave me one of his little logo stickers here. It's like a you know, oh, very nice. Yeah, and um, and I and I have some some other things. The only he wanted me to give this away, use this as a giveaway on our, mm -hmm. our podcast. And his only request was is that we do something that is a uh, thank you for your service type giveaway. Okay. And um, so I have this and, you know, since the, the, you know, these, the military guys are special to us, um, Craig Herzog um, uh, made a couple of ashtrays, um, mm -hmm. the uh, live edge ashtray with a, uh, a holder on it, mm -hmm. cork knocker, made a couple of pens. Uh, briar, one briar, mm -hmm. one um, uh, morta pen, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think I'm going to throw in a pipe too. What I'd like to do is do a uh, uh, do a contest where uh, our listeners um, can nominate uh, people for uh, and to lose power. Frozen. All right. It's these awkward moments of silence that make the world a special place. So hopefully Tim will come back. We are, when we come back, going to talk about our 300 YouTube subscribers. And we're going to do a giveaway with that. Got some great stuff for that. And hopefully Tim will be back momentarily. Ben, our fine producer, uh, who happens to be related to Tim, um, will probably have to edit this out. But that's all right. So we'll just... I'll just keep talking. So anyway, Steve Pipes. Bad storm. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, power went out, generators on, so mm. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, so anyway, picking up where I left off before I was right. so rudely interrupted. Yeah, Craig Herzog, some Live Edge tobacco yep. bowls. So the point is is we'll put together a um a nice package of uh, prizes, and um, we'd like our listeners to uh, nominate people who th they know would like a nice package of uh, of prizes, um, deserving based on their service. Tell us about uh, you know who you're recommending and why you're recommending them, their service, uh, you know what they did that made them special. 
and um, and then we'll uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll get uh, have Sarah on that night, and uh, she can help us pick. What do you think? All right, all right. Well, we should. And by the way, Tim, while we were away, we did hit three hundred subscribers. I believe we're up to three hundred and twelve at this point. Isn't that amazing? It is. And MBSD as MBSD pipes sent it this fantastic Chacombe Dublin, slightly bent. It's absolutely gorgeous. Metal adornment. Just a beautiful, beautiful pipe. So I, I thought we'd do it in three parts. So you you were gonna make a pipe for the winner. I was gonna make a pound of tobacco for the winner, and we'll give away the Chacombe. So we'll have three winners for our three hundred subscriber contest. Good deal. And and what do we want them to do, Tim? We want them to make us laugh. Just make us laugh. Don't care how you do it. Don't care what you do. Make us laugh. Make us laugh. And remember, we do read the warning label, so you can work blue if you so desire. Because we do. Yes. In fact, we encourage it. Please. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, I, I was listening to Justin Nathan. I can't say what I want to say. Then what's the point of a podcast? Uh, if yeah. I said that, you know, people take it wrong. Okay, then they take it wrong. You know, grow a pair. Get over it. Um, no, no. You know, look, the way I view it is if somebody's so offended by a thing that you say, then they don't really know who you are. There's a difference between the person and the joke. There has to be. There has uh, to be. Uh, I, right? I think that's kind of a, a symptom of America right now. Everybody is so afraid of offending someone and and not using the correct language. And we need to tear that wall down. Um, oh, yeah. That's yeah. our, in fact, you know what? That's our mission. Yeah. If we were to have a mission statement, which we wouldn't. We would no, absolutely not. No, that would be like no. goals, and we don't want those either. We're not doing this we for goals, goals or a mission statement. We're just two guys. No, nothing like that. No, no. <laughs> but you know, like to, to use corporate lingo, is it when it comes to uh, breaking down that wall? We're the tip of the spear. Yeah, that, there we go. That's it. We're bringing a new paradigm, or if you prefer, a new paradigm. <laughs> Either way. Paradigm. That's <laughs> paradigm. <laughs> <laughs> you got your syllables wrong. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, we were just talking about Justin and Nate. And I, I do have, and uh, other than uncontrollable muscle movements with this arm that is just worthless at this point. And by the way, while you were gone, I talked about uh, the injuries that I'm currently suffering from. I have not got the blend it's now going on like 20 days. I'm just screwed because yeah. I can't. So I tried to do some blending on Saturday. So I enlisted my, my youngest son who's, you know, let, let's not get ourselves. He's 30. So you guys can start to do math and figure out kind of old I am. And he goes, so what are we going to do? I said, well, I need you to open jars. I need you to do this. I need you to do this. And he goes, do I have to wear gloves? Yeah, if you're going to mix the tobacco. Uh, I'm not going to do it then. But what do you mean? He goes, yeah, I don't do that. And then it's like wearing I can't, a mask. Yeah, it's like wearing a mask. He goes, no, Dad, you know, they can man up. I'm going to touch it. But no, son, they they get picky about that. And then that's not what they want. Okay, I don't want to do it. Well, at least would you come up? You know, because I said, well, okay, if you can open it up, I can kind of do a little bit one handed with one glove on and and my very attractive uh, wrist brace. Um, and I I can't tighten the presses. You know, I can make the tobacco. So yeah. I mean, as long as he comes up and opens the jars, I'm like, a, you know, an 84-year-old woman. I can't open my own jars. You know, I, I thought, well, I'll just put them in my lap and open them up that way. No, the little fuckers spin, and I don't, like, have Velcro or anything that I can put between my thighs to clamp them in place. So it's just, it's awkward, and I hate getting old. But <laughs> So the, the, this injury, though, like, yeah. you must have really been going to town because, you know, like, you, you oh, can't yeah. do this. Oh, yeah, it was like I was, I was jacking off a rhino. I mean, it was just bad. <laughs> So our tree out front had a limb on it that the, uh, you know, it, it had a diameter of about 10 inches. And I don't have a chainsaw. And even if I did have a chainsaw, I, don't, I didn't have a ladder that would get me up to the 12 feet to where it was at. So I had to use the pole saw. So I'm oh. out jacking off this giant pole saw. Oh. And it took about an hour to get through it. Uh, and 
I didn't feel bad until the next morning. And then it was like, I'm, I'm paralyzed. I can't feel my two fingers, the nodule. So I have a nodule on my wrist, which is what really stopped me from forging anymore. And when it swells up, I can't feel my two smallest fingers can't grip anything. And it swelled up and my elbow, I just, it, it felt miserable. And I go, well, I'll tough it out. I'll tough it out. And I, no, I can't tough it out anymore. So I've got to go back to the doctor next week. And he's going to tell me if it's actually a pinch nerve in the elbow or I did some tendon damage. And, you know, just, uh, what the fuck? And, uh, but anyway, back to where, you know, again, not that we wander off topic ever, but <laughs> Justin recommended um, these silicone seals for the bottom of your Zippo. You know, they replace a little cotton flap. Yeah, uh, right. So those of you that are old enough or, 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 or ever carried a Zippo for any length of time know that when you freshly fill up your Zippo and put it in your pocket, it will burn your thigh. Um, you know, the, the lighter fluid will come out, it'll soak your pants a little bit, and then it'll cause a burning sensation you in your burn. thigh. Right. Yeah, and, and I don't particularly care for that. You know, I, I toughed through it when I was younger, and I, I have no such interest anymore. So I got one of these, and I thought, oh, man, this is great. It doesn't leak. I put it in my pocket. I carried it around. But I still can't get past the smell of lighter fluid because it just reminds me too much of cigarettes. But if you do use a Zippo, Justin's right. These silicone seals are absolutely perfect. Um, they, they work unbelievably well. I filled the Zippo up three weeks ago. Still burning. No way. Yeah. All right. Where where do you get that? Amazon has them. They're like five ninety nine yeah, okay. for six of them. You know, they're they're wow, not even right. a dollar a piece. So if you pull out that, you know, the, the it's a stiffer bit of uh, yeah, like of, cotton, uh, yeah, like cotton thing. You take that out and put the seal in in its place. Yep. All exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And, and uh, you know, th this is two ideas now that I've stolen from pipe spores. And pals, because they're the ones that told me about the Nordic Keystones, yeah. um, which I absolutely love. Um, and then this idea for the Zippo. And if I could get past the the smell of lighter fluid, I, I think that I would use my Zippo more, but I can't get past it. Yeah, those guys, are they're smart. Too bad they're quitting their podcast. Yeah, I know. You know? Jeez. Yeah. Damn, All right, that was hell? an April Fool's joke. Yeah, it was. And it was, you know, it was hilarious because they talked about Nate, you know, pursuing his dream of fishing instead of dressmaking. And then uh, right. Justin actually was going to become a softy bit salesman, which I thought was hilarious because I. That was pretty was, good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Because I sent him I a, sent a, a message to him and I said, hey, Nate, can I have your hat? And um, it, uh, Instagram blocked me for some reason. Really? Yeah. Huh. This So the whole social media thing is just horseshit. Don't you think? It's like, uh, you know, well, we're blocking you today because we don't like what you said. All I said was, you know, I want you to have your hat. Yeah, I want your hat. Yeah. You know, it's like the joke about the um, the guy that, you know, he's in the hospital and he's paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, the doctor comes in and says, I got good news and I got bad news. He says, well, give me the bad news first. He said, you're paralyzed from the waist down. You'll never walk again. And the guy says, oh, my God, that's terrible. What could the good news be? He's the guy in the bed next to you wants to buy your shoes. <laughs> that's where I was going with that. Yeah, exactly. And and that hurts someone's feelings. My, we're Appar a sensitive apparently. bunch, aren't we? You know, uh, you know, it's interesting because Jay message, Jay from Pipe and Tamper, Jay Furman, everybody knows Jay, uh, who's now a master of pipes, by the way. Congratulations, Jay. You get Congratulations. I saw that. That was great. Yeah, that is amazing. And all you do for in what the... What that guy does for this community should have happened a well, while ago. He messaged me and says, have you been getting anybody giving you a hard time about being a home blender? I said, no. I know that there are people that don't like home blenders. I know that there are people that you know, look down on it like we're not professionals or anything. And I certainly don't claim to be a professional, but... You know, if somebody doesn't like what I'm doing, uh, okay. You know, my shoulders are broad. My skin is thick. I really don't. Okay. Don't like it. You know, we're good. Doesn't hurt my feelings. You know, you know, if I stopped to yell at every dog that barked on me in the journey, I'd never get anywhere. So, you know, how thin skinned are people? You know, uh, does it bother you, Jim? I the, no. I thought the way that that went was if I stopped to date every dog, but no. I think you're right. Yeah, I, you so could date him. So what was he getting at with that? What well, was he, he was just like, question? you know, are people giving you a hard time? And I'm like, no. And he, he says, you know, does does it bother you? I said, absolutely not. 
you know, some some people don't like home. You know, some people don't like Adam and Cloud Bear and you know Killer Briars and some of the other smaller guys that are out there. Or uh, what's his name? I think it's Killer Briars. I think he stepped away, but you know, th- there's only a couple of us. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. That's okay. Doesn't hurt my feelings. You know, I, I just play at it because it's a passion. You know? It's going to be a place for everybody. Yeah. You know, and you if know. you don't if you don't like it, you know, you know. how many other people can say yeah? Forty blends on my list are from suggestions, you know, people wanted me to make something for them. And now they're on the blend list. You know, how cool is yeah, that? Right. Yeah. And it grows exponentially. And I've got a whole bunch of them. And by the way. Um, I don't honestly know how you keep it all straight. I, I'm spreadsheets. It's always spreadsheets. It's always spreadsheets. And I, I'm I'm waiting for confirmation of this. Uh, but uh, apparently our mutual friend, Wes Carnahan, uh, may have passed away from Order of the Pipe. Well, yeah, uh, I know. Eric, they had something posted on his Facebook, and then it got taken down. <clears throat> but uh, somebody caught it, and you know he he, he passed away a couple of days ago. And it, it how terrible! I owe West. You know, I mean, he he was the first interview I ever did about tobacco blending. Hell, I made two blends based he's on. A, he's being a great rich. guy. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. I, I hope that's not true. Yeah, me too. Because oh. I I just you had- know. Yes. Little ones, kids. Yeah, yeah, yes. little ones. Oh, I, I, I think they were not... nine and seven. You know, but yeah. yeah. Hmm. So I hope not. But you know, he just uh, he he does a podcast called uh, the Underdog Journey, um, and it's uh, a, a, it's about dogs and about marketing and some other stuff. It, it's kind of an interesting podcast. And he just posted five days ago. I was like. Eric, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, somebody just posted it, but they took it down, and they're trying to track it down. So hopefully that's not the case. Yeah. I wish wow. West a long and happy life, but God. how terrible if I it was. Because he's only in his 30s. I hope you know, that's not the... correct. Yeah, yes. me too. Young guy. Yeah, me too. Oh, so anyway, coming up, we'll have our 300th giveaway, and then we'll follow that up with uh, our – services and we'll post uh you know uh, nominate somebody who served our country you know and we'll give away some stuff for that too a nice price package yeah so yeah that'll be cool yeah it'd be good yeah so anyway um we have a ton of stuff from the previous episodes that we didn't cover because i had a whole bunch of stuff for episode 31 from episodes 29 and 30 uh, but the episode was cut short by Manhattans and apparently a local IPA. So <laughs> that was well worth it. Yeah. So Simple Georgian went back and commented on our interview with Richard. Had a blast at Mule Town. Enjoyed the conversation. Congratulations to the winners. Looking forward to Chicago Pipe Show. Also looking forward to trying uh, more of your blends and hopefully get a pipe from Tim. Thanks for the content. Well, thank you. We appreciate that, Willie. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Sleepy Piper Todd enjoyed the episode. The autocorrects were hilarious. Yes, they were. Those were pretty damn funny. And by the way, Garrett, uh, Trex on Wheels uh, is his YouTube channel. Send us a whole bunch more autocorrects, which we'll get to here in a minute. And they're, they're pretty funny, too. And I oh, promise them. Let, let me just da- go down memory road oh, yeah. for a second. The one was about, uh, I can't remember what it was supposed to but it was, it was a, uh, I like, Man and a dog on it. I want to see some naked. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I forget how it went yeah, exactly. That was, that was really good. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, I, you know, and and the car stories. You know, the guy. Yeah, I'm pulling in to get an oil change with my steering wheels on fire. It's hilarious. <laughs> that always John. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so sleepy Piper Todd enjoyed the episode. Those. Autocracks were hilarious. I think I read this. Uh, Karen Isany. Uh, this is Fred. I live in St. Louis suburbs. Great to know you have, uh, great to have you in my hometown. Suburbs are much better. Don't go downtown much anymore. Okay. Uh, and then Fred commented again on another post and said, this is Fred. You guys are uh, amazing. Always a hoot. Keep up the excellent videos and look forward to it every week. And we apologize. We've been off for two weeks, you know, but. It happens. We go places. We do stuff. And by the way, work. Uh, I'll be traveling a lot coming up here pretty quick. Oh, wow. A lot of Monday through Thursday stuff. Really? Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. St. Louis again? 
I have no. I, I know I have to go to Sorry. Vegas. I have, I have to go to Vegas in May for a trade show. Mm. This you should get him to send you there in October. Yeah, I'll well, send you the dates. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. Uh, yeah. Challenger Dart, uh, thirty-seven, thirty-one. Great vid goes. Great video, guys. Thanks a lot. I can't wait to see Simon with you guys in, uh, on the show. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm Yusuf, looking, really looking forward to that conversation. Uh, man, and I got to tell you, I will pull out every pipe that I have from Simon, and I have 13 of them, and we'll talk about all of them because I, Simon, is, watching him create, uh, it was pipe, I believe, 584. Uh, which was a, an apple, a four-star apple, and he gave me fir- first ride at refusal, and it was—it's just a beautiful pipe, and I smoke it all the time, and I love it. So, uh, Yusuf Syed, uh, good morning, awesome show, gents. Thanks, and have a wonderful weekend. Greetings from South Africa. Well, thank you, Yusuf. We appreciate it. Uh, Grant, twenty-six fifty-one, great show, guys. Please remember, not all of Colorado is what the Californians have turned Denver into. Uh. No, you're wrong. It's, just, it's, it's all California all the time. <laughs> I'm not even going to get started on this. Our, our friend Terry Brewster, great show, guys. Just got home from Mule Town and finally watching this episode. Thank you for the explanation, Tim, on Calabash pipes. Ironically, I've been smoking the reverse Calabash I bought from you right now. Love this pipe. Oh, yeah, Jim. Tim is known as the tree marker. I think Columbia PD has proof from drone footage. Tim, is there a story there? Well, all right. Yeah, a little bit. So, and I'm proud to tell it. I'm not ashamed. Attaboy, Tim. Um, Don't let us down now. Come on. (laughs) Uh, You know, being of the advanced age, and um, uh, I have uh, my... uh, genetic precursors to uh, thank for this. Uh, if this was um, the size of, you know, like a ball, you know, in the three dimension, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it would be the size of my prostate. Oh, it's about right. that big. And so when you uh, consume the, the, the quantities of beer that I consumed on Saturday, they only have two bathrooms in that place. And when you got to go, you got to go. Yeah. And so there was a, uh, uh, across the street from the Briar Works, there's just a, uh, I don't know, it's like a drop off, you know, the road. And then there's a like a little uh, uh, part that's mown. And then there's briars, just big bank of briars. And there's a drop off. So you just kind of like worm your way into those briars and just stand there and uh, I, relieve yourself and then t- turn around and go back. I mean, I live out in the country. We do that all the time. It's not. Yeah, that's Ain't you know nothing, when you're right? when you're a when you're a guy, all of nature is just one toilet, and <laughs> like I tell my wife all the time, the only thing smaller than my mind is my bladder. It's the size of a good almond anymore. If I sip something, oh, yeah, I got to pee twelve times. Right. <laughs> that's right. When it's humid, it's if it's humid outside, I got to pee. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, is like it cold? That. Yeah, I got to pee. Is it warm? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got I got to pee. <laughs> That's right. Don't we get old the, kids. Uh, this is no country for old men. We were at the uh, the baseball game in in Arizona, and you park on it. Looked like a a uh, uh, like a polo field, beautifully mm-hmm. manicured, like a tabletop, you know. And they pull all the cars up there, park, and I get out and walk to the thing. And by the time I get up there, I know I got to go, you know. So they said, "Well, no, the, uh, the there's no restrooms out here. You have to wait till the gates open, and that's in an hour." I'm like, "This ain't happening. I'm, I don't have an hour in me." <laughs> so back to the back to the car, you know, and uh, you open the doors. Yeah, exactly. Voila, you know. Yep, perfectly manicured like, lawn. I'm gonna write my it name drained, on it. It drained very well. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, Grat then asked if I have tried Jim's Burger Heaven. No, I haven't. Don't even know where it is. You got to give me a little more information than that. I don't. Is it in yeah, Denver? Right. Is it? Seen him someplace. Uh, Smokestacks. Uh, love the show that starts with blank stares. LOL made me check if it was playing. Uh, because I believe episode 30, it kicked on and we're just staring vacantly, not aware that the show had started. So that was pretty good. Uh, 
Blake Pipes. <laughs> Some of our best performance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vacant stares. Look at that. He's yeah. got that thousand yard stare. What the hell's wrong with him? Just blinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're live? Oh, hey. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm Jim. Um, anyway, Blake's Pipes, uh, big meat and salad shooter. I would be honored to come on the cast. We can talk about it that at some point. Not sure I can add anything to the show other than another guy with a beard that offends someone. You know, I, I got to say, yeah, I, after having horse bone and Kevin Foster on, I, I think that's exactly what we're looking for. So we'll have you on as a guest <laughs> here coming up quick and I'll, I'll get with you momentarily. But please uh, come drunk. Salad Shooter, hope you had a great time at Mule Town. And Big Meat, hope you enjoyed the conference. Looking forward to your life tonight. There we go. Okay, so now we go back to episode 31. Epic show, Tipsy Tim on Fire. I can't think of a better advertisement for the Mule Town show. Thank you, Bluebird Farm. We appreciate that. Uh, Smokestacks. That doesn't get out much. Yeah. Smokestacks, Garrett. And uh, we got a bunch of questions from Garrett again tonight, so we'll go through those here in a little bit. That was a great show, fellas. I laughed hard. Thank you. I needed that. Terry Brewster. That was hilarious. Is drinking a prerequisite now? Another great show, guys. Um, I think some of our best shows have been, uh, we've had libations. Yeah. And I, I think we need to go back to that. I gave it up for Lent, so, so 40 right. days without any form of alcohol right now, and i got to fix that. Yeah. It's like riding uh, a bike, too, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right back on. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. Beautiful pipe. Uh, this is from Yusuf Syed, another one. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Beautiful pipe. Awesome show. Thanks for sharing. Have a wonderful day and greetings from South Africa. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Just shows the fun and enjoyment that could be had at Mule Town. Great show, folks. And some fine pipes indeed. And they were right. The sandblasting is perfect. Blake pipes again. I think Sarah Shooter did well representing pipe and tobacco talk. It was a who's who of the tobacco world. All right. So that kind of goes through all the comments from our last couple of shows. We do have uh, a couple of questions for the show, and I have to get to. Hey, and before we go to the questions, I wanted to tell you, too, uh, they didn't mention this. Steve Norse was there, mm -hmm. and he treated us to. I think they were from 19, it, sometime in the 1940s. It was a can of cigarettes. Oh, You know, where you, you opens the can, you know. They're, yeah. They're, uh, and you got to pull the middle cigarette. out and the cigarette slides up. Yeah. And, the, and um, so we each had a, a cigarette. The smell of the tobacco in those things, it was dreamy. It was, you know, they're not, they're nothing like a cigarette that you would smoke today. This, it was actually, um, you know, it didn't taste like, uh, I don't know, some sort of chemical fire. Um, and so the point is, thank you, Steve. That was really, a, it was a real treat. You know, I, I have, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, tobacco from the 40s and 50s and, and, and before, because really in the 50s was when they started to, do, to dick around with cigarettes. Um, you know, and, and let's face it, it's not, I don't have anything against the cigarette companies. If you smoke cigarettes, I really don't, it doesn't hurt my feelings, but cigarettes from then and cigarettes today, you know, uh, where did they come up with, you know, 91% more nicotine than tobacco has in it? You know, well, they spray that stuff, you know, ammonia B, you know, if you like Marlboros, you're getting ammonia B, get over it. You know, I, I smoked them for a long time this is what it is. So. We do have uh, two questions from Noah, one for me, one for you. Tim, have you uh, – so this is at Noah's house, a uh, great friend of the show, love his channel. If you haven't watched his channel, he's getting into gardening because spring is finally starting to creep around the corner in his part of Pennsylvania. Please please look up Tim at Noah. Uh, please look up Noah at Noah's house. Tim, have you upgraded your sandblast setup? I have not. Um, that's on my list of things to do. Um, <laughs> my, my issue right now is, um, you, even though I have more space is, uh, space for th that sandblast cabinet. Mm -hmm. Um, that thing makes a mess and, uh, mm -hmm. um, 
I've got that issue, and the other issue I have is um, one of capacity, um, air. Oh, Sandblast okay. uses a lot of air, and my uh, my compressor is just not big enough. So I'm not sure what I'm going to – I have to uh, upgrade that whole system. I think I'm going to go to a bench top, and I'll probably sell that unit. Um, somebody will buy it, and then um, – it's pretty nice. It's just mm -hmm. it's too big, and um, – I think I can go with a smaller one and I can get it in the uh, the new space. So that's the story there. Okay. Plus, it's, it, when it's cold outside, you know, I have to do it outside. You spray, um, you know, it's you got the, that uh, evaporative heat on, off your hands when you're blowing air across something. Mm -hmm. And when it's like, you know, 10 degrees outside, that's just not the thing to be doing. No, no. Yeah. All right. Uh, he has a question for me. With the new presses, are you going to start using Mylar bags or another form of packaging other than mason jars? No. No, I'm not. Um, it, it's come up a couple of times. People have asked me. I, I, every tin of tobacco I get, I put in a mason jar. Uh, I've been bitten by stuff not being sealed properly, uh, metal tins rusting, uh, I've caught mold. I, I got somebody sent me a beautiful can of Presbyterian ordained and it was molded through I and mean, it was just white with mold. So, um, no. And, and I, 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 boy, here's the hypocritical moment of episode 32. Um, you know, I complained about not getting bags at the grocery store, you know, because, you know, they're plastic and we're saving sea turtles from, you know, spoons right. or whatever. Getting a straw this nose, yeah. I hate plastic. I just don't like it at all. Um, I don't like Mylar bags. I don't like, and the way I looked at it, uh, it it's kind of like uh, if I send somebody tobacco in a Mylar bag, it's like getting a gift card. Yep, it's nice, but now you've given me a chore. You know, now I have to put it in something else because the Mylar bag isn't going to keep it. Um, you know, I think we've all gotten bags of tobacco from somebody that's been in a plastic bag. And if you don't put it in a jar right away, it's dry as a bone, loses its flavor. Um, and I just, if somebody asks for me to put it in a vacuum sealed bag, I'll do that for them uh, by request. Uh, but no, I, I like my mason jars. And until I get big enough where I can afford, you know, to, to actually get a... a, a a tinning press and all the accoutrements with it. And no, I'm not the Mason jars is I like it and that's what I keep them in. So yep. no. All right. Now it's your thing. That's my thing. And we have a list of questions from, from Garrett from smoke snacks. So Garrett, here we go. You ready? Here we go. Yep. Uh, he and he prefaces. I tried to do better with more direct questions this time. Question one: What is your favorite codger or codger-like blend? Tim, what's your favorite codger blend? Well, if you've been listening to this uh, podcast for any period of time, you know that um, I'm a Latakia guy, and um, I like uh, Balkan. And uh, my favorite codger blend is the Beaumont Supreme, the one that right. you blended for me. You know? Okay. All right. Um, it, it, Garrett, I, I have a little bit of take, a different take on it, because I, I do like codger blends. I, I have Captain Black in my cellar, uh, but I have more Carter Hall. Uh, of the codger blends, I absolutely love Carter Hall. I have Sir Walter Raleigh. I have Prince Albert. I have... Uh, Captain Black, or Captain Black original. I really don't like any of the other flavors of Captain Black. I like Captain Black original. Um, you know, I, I tried drum. I just didn't like it. Um, it's just a personal thing, you know, it just didn't meet my palate. It's not, it wasn't a bad tobacco. It just didn't, it didn't resonate with me, but I love Carter Hall. Um, that would probably be my codger blend. So, all right. Number two. If you had to think at gunpoint between a super wet smoke or a super hot smoke, which one? And I think he meant to put, if you had to choose between a super wet smoke or a super hot smoke, which one? Uh, I'm probably the wet. 
I always like a good wet one. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, because the thing about if your tobacco's wet, you light it on fire, it'll dry out a little bit. You know, it, it's not yeah. the end of the world. A, a really hot smoke, I think, takes away from the flavor of the tobacco where wet isn't I, quite I, as terrible. Yeah. So, I agree. Tim and I yeah. both agree that wet is better than super hot. Number three, I know these aren't your favorite, but when smoking, what goes better, vodka or tequila, assuming there are no other options? Uh, well, I'm always going to go for the tequila. In Yeho, as long as it's in Yeho. Yeah. Um, um, if it's uh, like a, a silver tequila or vodka, I'd probably drink water. Um. Okay, so this how it, it is for me. Isn't a gunpoint. I am not a huge fan of potato nectar. Um, I just, it's, you know, uh, oh, I, I made a white Russian. Okay, great. You know, I, I used to make mudslides. So I would vodka and Bailey's Irish cream and Kahlua. Um, and that's, vodka's fine for that. But if you're asking me if I'm going to choose between tequila or vodka, tequila wins every time and twice on Sundays. It's not even close. Vodka is a uh, was my uh, was my first foray into uh, the alcohol binge when I was like seventeen, and you know they make the um, the jug with the handle, yeah, and you can do that one handed, and you can tip that up like that, and you can drink on that for a long time, and uh, the only thing that's going to do for you is make you hate vodka, and to this day, I can't get it past my lips. Ugh. Um. So, I won't give away how old I was, but we decided that we were going to have vodka, and somebody said that if you take a Pepsi can and pour out most of the Pepsi and put the vodka in, you discover that it's not quite as terrible as just potato nectar by itself. So, I, we did that, and I think the one I had had about 10 fluid ounces of vodka in it, and this is where I found out about the term sneaky drunk. Okay. I'm drinking it. I'm feeling great. I get through about half the can. And I thought, I don't understand why people act this way. I I don't feel anything at all. <clears throat> and then I finished the can and I have no idea what happened after that. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I woke up in my friend's backyard, uh, covered in mosquito bites, absolutely hating my life. <laughs> You know, it's like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, and, you know, I, I I wake up and I look up and his dad is looking at me through the kitchen window with a cup of coffee. And he goes, and, and my friend's dad was a, another man a few words. There's just something about that generation. They, you know, put on quite a show last night. And I said, oh, cool, cool. What did I do? He goes, no, nope, and walked away. And my buddies called me up and said, are you, you know, I finally get home like 10 o'clock in the morning. My buddy's, my phone's been ringing, you know, because back then you didn't have cell phones. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, 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 I hate life, but yeah, I'm, I guess I'm okay. I've never seen anybody get that drunk before. <laughs> well, that was my first experience drinking, and I had uh, 10 ounces of vodka. Yeah, I had 10 yeah, shots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. bad. Yep, yep. No, yeah, and yeah. I, uh, I keep that at arm's length. Not one of my favorites. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, question number four. What pipe show would be best for the first time for a pipe idiot like me? Tim, what pipe show would you send him to? You know, if if you have a weekend to spend and you can you can manage it, next year, if you haven't gone to any pipe shows yet, go to the Mealtown show. Okay. And the reason I say that is, is the atmosphere is set up to... Um, to get you to meet people mm -hmm. and you're going to meet more people uh, at, at that in a, in a relaxed atmosphere than I think you will at just about any other show. I'm biased probably, but um, you know, Columbus is nice um, uh, because, you know, there's a, uh, uh, a smoking um, tent out back mm -hmm. in the courtyard but that's only on Saturday afternoon. The the uh, thing that makes the Milltown different is 
the party on Friday. Yeah. And uh, they have a meetup and uh, it's just a great, great time. So if you can do it, go on Friday and Saturday. You don't have to go Sunday, but go Friday and Saturday. You won't be sorry. All right. Um, I have heard. I've never been to one either, so I can't say. I, I have a personal allegiance to the Ohio Pipe Show. Uh, because that was very special for me because that's where my blends first got out to the public. Tim took them to the Ohio show in 22. Um, and, and I owe a great debt of allegiance to the North, uh, the NASPC uh, and the Ohio show. Um, you know, you live here in Colorado. Uh, Vegas is close by. You know, it's an hour and a half flight, um, you know, Vegas. But I, I think I agree with Tim. If you're just going to go to one, it's going to be your first one. Um, make it mule time. So, all right. Yep. All right. Oh. Okay. Number five. What's the cheapest non cob pipe you have enjoyed the most? Tim? I would say that it's a. Uh... There's a, I have a Dr. Graybo uh, billiard that um, of all the like low end pipes, that's probably the one that I pick up and smoke as often as I smoke artisan pipes that I own. So it's just like part of the, part of the rotation. If it's dry and depending on what I'm, I'm smoking, um, I'll grab that one. Uh, I have others that are, you know, production pipes that, yeah, not so much. Um, actually, uh, somewhere here on my desk, because I just smoked it uh, the other day. Uh, you know, here's what, oh, here it is. I, this is the, I, I brought this out on episode um, 29 or 30. Uh, delivered to the house, $45, Dr. Grabo. Uh, it, it smokes great. Absolutely love it. Um no problems with it whatsoever. Um, I I have probably 140 estate pipes. Um, I, 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 you know, some of these pipes, you know, I, I bought a lot of them, uh, a lot. And by a lot, I mean, you know, somebody was selling 10 of them. Uh, and of those 10, I think eight of them are still in my collection. And I think I spent $44 on them. You know, I, I cleaned them out, refinished them, you know. The the stems were in okay shape. In, in, I hate pipe chatter, so that's why all my pipes have pipe condoms on it. You know, I just, after you've sanded about the 50th one, you start to get pissed off at people for chewing through their stems. You know, well, the, the artisan spent all that time on it. Well, yeah, don't be a dick. Cover that thing, you know, wrap that whacker, you know. Um, in fact, I, I was going to talk about this in a little bit. Um this is a Falstaff pipe uh, that I took out for its maiden voyage. I bought it. It was an estate pipe from uh, Smoking Pipes. It was 40 bucks, and I took it out on the first run, uh, and the, my, it was walking the dog. Dog went ahead to try to chase a squirrel, knocked the pipe out of my hands. I broke the stem off of it, and I sent it to this really amazing pipe craftsman named Tim Beaumont at Papa Bear's Pipes. And one of the services that he does is that he repairs pipes. Um, and he put a new uh, stumble on it, uh, you know, fixed the, fixed it up, and it, it smokes perfectly, fits great, and, you know, it's a $40 pipe. Um, you know, that's, a, that's a nice little pipe, too. I like yeah, that pipe. Yeah, a little Dublin. Yeah. It, it's got a nice deep bowl. It's got thick walls. It, it's a good little pipe. Mm -hmm. You know, I... That's in the eye of the beholder. Um, you know, if you like a pipe that cost you four bucks, you bought off eBay, then good on you. You know, uh, yeah. we're not we're not snobs about it in any way, shape, or form. So, smoke what you like. You know, and I I do have pipe acquisition disorder, and we're going to talk about that in a minute because oh, did I get some dandies? Um, okay, N number six. Now we're kind of leaving the reservation here. Many guys make the best of friends after confrontation, parentheses, many times physical. What is the best story you have to that effect? And was it Tim that took the first swing? 
Oh, LOL. Well, I can... There's not one that comes to mind for me so much, but there is a good one, a better one of my brother who uh, he's got a uh, he's got a fuse about this long. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, driving his uh, Ford Ranger um, and uh, he was driving behind somebody and the guy checked his brakes and he, you know, he stopped up short. And uh, they they took off again. The guy did it again. So, uh, I don't know, probably 100 feet before a red light, he decides to pass the guy. And he swings around him, gets right in front of him, and he slams on his brakes. And the guy just comes right up behind him and, you know, barely, he barely misses him. And he did it again. So then the guy um, uh, pulls out around him on the, uh, at the, you know, when the light turns green. And um, it just scrapes along the side of his truck and then takes off and turns right, goes up this road towards an interstate. So he's like, oh, hell no. So he follows him. They're doing this cat and mouse thing um, all the way up the uh, the road. On the, uh, the on-ramp to the interstate, the guy tries to pass my brother and he decides, he tries to pass me, I'm going into him. And he did. And, and my brother did. And he said, I looked in the rearview mirror and all I saw was molding and glass and shit just flying <laughs> in the air. So then they're on the interstate and they're doing the cat and mouse thing. State trooper sees them doing it. Pulls them over, both of them. And, uh, you know, and he said something to the effect of, you know, I've never seen anything like that before. You guys follow me down to the local police station. I drove by the police station just after, minutes after they got there just coincidentally. And I thought, that's like my brother Jeff's truck. And he was one of the ones that was with me at the Mule Town show. Mm -hmm. And um, so both these guys, they calmed down and uh, they, you know, the cop didn't, didn't cite them, but made them, you know, you guys pay for your own damage. And so they were both standing there, you know, feeling like assholes. And, uh, they both admitted that they were they were assholes, and the two of them went down the street to a bar and had a beer. <laughs> so that's actually a pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. good. Story. Well, yeah, <laughs> did a pit run. I don't have one run. like that. Um, yeah, I don't have one like that. I have been in a, a physical fight with my friend Mark. We did not get along our sophomore year of high school at all. So we we had a, a little Donnie Brook. And by the end of junior year, we were best friends and, and stayed that way till he went off to the army and I went off and found my own way. Um, you know, it, yeah, it happens. Um, is what it is. You know, guys, guys will throw punches at each other periodically. So, you know, we, we, men are men. Oh, I'm going to insult yeah. you. Okay. I'm going to slap you. Well, I'm going to hit you back. So there you go. All right. Question seven. We're finally to the end of the questions. In reference to my last list of questions, just guessing after all your It Depends answers, did you get an offer to be a sponsor by Depends Adult Diapers? LOL. Huh. Have you seen that? Uh, it was on, I think it was on Instagram. It was the uh, the old lady, grandmother, the, the kids are saying, Granny, come with us. We're going to play tennis. <laughs> she goes to stand up, and then she sits right back down, and she goes, I better sit this one out. So they walk away. Have you seen this? Yeah. And the old guy comes up to her and says, still having problems? <laughs> she said, he goes, come with me. So he pulls this big thing out. It's enormous. It's this bag of, oops, I shit my pants. <laughs> That's the name of <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you said that to us this weekend. That was hilarious. So, <laughs> And he says, here, watch this, the demonstration. He's got a whole gallon jug of iced tea, and he dumps it in there. He goes, but let's just say this is a gallon of your feces, <laughs> and he dumps it in that diaper. <laughs> she goes, wow, that's a lot of dung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He uh, goes, and they're biodegradable. Now, that's good for the environment. <laughs> that's right. Sea turtles won't get into this. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway. The ending scene is him walking away. He's got a pair of pants on, you know, and his ass is like enormous because <laughs> that, that diaper's just full. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, excellent. So Garrett also, in addition to his questions, sent us some autocorrects, and these are pretty good. I'm going right. to try to get through these without laughing. Text message, having a hard time sleeping, trying to find the right relaxation sound to lull me into La La Land. I'm thinking genital thunderstorm. What do you think? Oh, God, genital, genital, genital. What the fuck? Genital. Ah! I, I've <laughs> never heard a genital thunderstorm, but it sounds good. Uh... <laughs> As opposed to gentle? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, gentle, genital. It's close. Genital. You know, when you can't spell autocorrect really makes you look stupid. I got to. Um, so here's a son texting his dad. Dad, do you have any idea where my diploma is? Uh, it's in your mom's anus. And the dad texts again, anus. Anus. The son goes, uh, it's in her anus. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, upstairs in her house in storage. Okay, I I will search mom's anus. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Qu- quite type out attic there, could you, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. And here's a guy that just, he went off the rails. Yo. I'm so hungry, I'd eat a dong right now. Uh, oh, no, I'm so horny, I'd eat a dong right now. Horny. Hungry. Hungry for dong. Dong. Not dong. Dog. Fridge autocorrect. <laughs> Fridge auto cucumber. I give up. Dude. <laughs> that was pretty good. All right. Uh, he also <laughs> sent a worst car. Uh, 1993 Chevy Cavalier Z24 bought in 99 for $400, 185,000 would shudder and seize and die at stoplights when warm found out the second and third gears had broken into pieces, still drove five, even on the highway. Those pieces would finally be sucked back into the main gearbox and stall the car out. Once the fluid stopped moving, nobody wanted to drive around with me. It would move again after sitting for 10 to 15 minutes. My father rebuilt the transmission and 10,000 miles that happened later. Screw this car. Worst Valentine's Day card. Not bad for me, but I gave my ex-wife the separation divorce papers the day before Valentine's Day and walked away. Heard her on the phone crying to whoever. I bet he didn't even think about getting me a gift. No, I got me a great (laughs) gift. No more cheating wife in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Divorce paper. What? No card? <laughs> no gift? Uh, it's a magical gift, honey. <laughs> I know. I know. I know a guy that his his uh, wife was just nuts. Absolutely nuts. And uh, it was expensive, but he said it was like the best million dollars he ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> I I have a friend who, over the course of his life, has married not one, not two, but three strippers. For for those of you young fellows out here, here's a piece of advice. The stripper doesn't love you. <laughs> the stripper only loves you as long as you have money in your wallet. First wife, <laughs> she cheated on him with everything walking upright and everything else and drained his bank account. He learned his lesson. He found true love at another strip club. The second one had a minor drug problem. And uh, once he gave her a credit card, it was off to the races. In the divorce process, he found out that not only had she taken that credit card, but she had opened six more credit cards in his name and had racked up about $75,000 in debt in his name alone. Gee. Divorces her. Oh. He's We're in our 50s now. Calls us up about 10 years ago. I met the one. Yeah, we've heard this before. Um, don't tell me she's a stripper. And there's dead silence on the other end of the phone. <laughs> she's a hostess at a strip club. Oh, well, that makes it all better. Oh, yeah. okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, there she you loves you too. Way yeah, better. Abs- Way better. Absolutely. Yeah. He marries her anyway, and none of us would come to the wedding because we know how this is going to end. And we're just like, you know, why do we have to pretend that this isn't going to end the way we think it is? He comes home 
from work early one day. And there's three guys in his living room and his wife isn't there. And the one of the guys looks up at him and he goes, you're number seven. What, what do you mean I'm number seven? Oh, yeah, she's in the room and back here. She's got three guys in the bedroom and three guys waiting. He's probably thinking, finally, I got a woman with a job. <laughs> well, she didn't rack up credit card debt for you, you know, but she she was she was taking numbers. And it's like, dude, you just have to stop. Cut that out. You know? Jeez. You know, we do have some more auto cracks from Garrett. Uh, I kind of mixed up the order, so get over it. Uh, Luke messages his uh, his wife. Uh, Chicken vagina sound good for dinner? Um, no, not really. <laughs> and roll on the floor, by the way. What well, what would you rather have? Oh my God, haha! Chicken fajitas. What the fuck, phone? <laughs> Definitely not chicken vaginas. His wife sent him back, and she goes, "Oh, that sounds much better." Yeah, I don't want chicken vaginas for dinner either. They're kind of small. I'm really hungry. They're kind of small. Yeah, but get about a hundred of those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mom <laughs> texting her child great news grandma is homosexual son okay homo hot lips hot tulips I'm getting fists <laughs> no. I'm getting fisted now <laughs> frustrated grandma is H-O-M-E home from the hospital <laughs> The son goes, ha ha, homo hot lips? <laughs> Classic. I'm getting fisted, she said. <laughs> I wonder if she couldn't type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mama, I don't need to know that. You don't have to send me that text. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, and now a word from our sponsor, Cramp Easy Loop. We absolutely have to hammer down on mom. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. So those, those are pretty funny. So remember, the 300 contest, make us laugh. Don't care how you do it. You know, if, if, if it's mom getting fisted, we're kind of okay with it. You know, we'll just let that go. <laughs> <sighs> God, I'm laughing so hard, I'm crying. Terrible. So, what what else is new in your collection? Did you pick up any tobacco while you were at Mule Town? Did you do anything fun? Um, I got some. Uh, I bought a um, pound of uh, Mac Baron uh, Latakia slices. Oh. And uh, man, oh man, I say. Oh. So I'll send you some. Oh, um, I've got two pounds of it. I I love Mac oh, Baron Latakia. Oh yeah. That that's been in my yeah. cellar, um, you know. In in 2020, uh, you know, when I was you know back full swing into it, my buddy says, "You you really got to try these." And I said, "Okay, what is it?" It's Latakia Flake from Mac Baron, and I got a tin of it, and it's like, oh, this is butter. So yeah, yeah, I, I love stuff. that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, and then I was I gotta... talking to I was I was going back and forth with a uh, a guy on. Uh... Uh, on Instagram, I'll, I'll leave it anonymous. And the point of the uh, the, the discussion is, um, uh, he had some um, uh, some Margate and some Dorchester and a couple of other esotericas and uh, you know anybody interested. And I reached out to him, and we were having a hard time coming to uh, terms on what because I, I would like to get some Dorchester, you know, mm -hmm. it's good to put it up, you know. But um, uh, what he what he wanted for it, and what I would be willing to would be willing to pay was pretty far apart. And and you know what he said was, "Geez, you know, I'm not trying to be un, unreasonable. I just I really don't know what to ask for it." And I I told him, "Well, look, I I can't uh, make it. You know, I can't suggest anything." Um, because I really don't know what it ought to cost. So I don't know. What do you What do you think about that? Um, you know, you it's know, just a it, it, this, these hard to find tobaccos. Um, it's just a. Uh, 
it's a it's a toss of the coin, you know. And I didn't want to offer him something that was below, you know, insult him. And he didn't want to like, you know, be gouging. So we ended up just walking away because, you know, we're going in two different directions. Um. Okay. So we we've talked about you know like the legendary blends that have kind of gone away, like all the McClellan stuff and, you know, some of the things that have vanished. Esoterica's blends are running line. You, you can catch them at your local brick and mortar. Um, I would never pay more than what I could get from a brick and mortar. Yeah. Um, because they're, they're, it's not like there's, uh, there is a limited supply just because of the way, they they market it here in the states, um, right? But I just no, I, I I yeah. This is gonna sound terrible. I just don't care for them enough. Uh, Eric Mills from EMC Custom Cobs has sent me samples of just about everything Esoterica makes, and they were good. I liked them, but not enough that I would ever pay more than you know brick and mortar price or what I can get them for online. I, I would never pay yeah. a premium for it. So right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, and I guess that's where I was on it, and, and uh, but you know, there's uh, uh, you know, willing buying, willing seller, willing buyer kind of thing, and uh, no, but uh, you know, because like I bought uh, some McClellan um, at, at the, uh, the show last August, I bought some McClellan off of Adam, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I willingly paid up for that because you just can't find it, right, and and. You know what he was offering was reasonable, and uh, but uh, again, to your point, some of the stuff that's like, you know, you just got to get it at the right place at the right time. It's available. You just have to. No, you just have to be you vigilant. Know. You know, vigilant. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, and and I have. You know, people call me all the time. You know, can you replicate something? In fact, we did it twice for. Um, West show, the order of the pipe when he was doing, uh, you know, his live broadcast on Friday night, you know, and that's where order of the pipe came from. That was Wes's blend and folks mill reserve. He wanted to copy frog Martin and, and people send me stuff, you know, can you copy this? And it's like, well, no, I can't, I can make you a good blend based on what the tin description is. I, I can make you something that I think you'll like. Uh, in fact, John, uh, who did, I did the galactic barrel 42 for called me today and we talked for about a half hour and he says, you know, what, what do you think about this? And we had this exact conversation and no, I will not, I, I will not pay 80 or a hundred dollars for a tin of McClellan's because although it's good, it, it's not good enough to be worth that. And, yeah. and I'm the same way. And we talked about esoterica too. He goes, do you like it? And I said, yeah. Do you like it enough? No, I won't pay extra for it. So yeah, it, it's not that good. In my yeah, opinion. well, I mean, and that that should figure into it too. Is like, do you like it? You know? Yeah, I mean, there's no sense in, you know, just it's not not like buying a, uh, you know, like a, a gold coin or something. It's something that you're going to consume, and so it yeah. better be something that you like. Yeah, and and for me, it, are they great blends? Absolutely. Do, do I like them enough to pay eighty or a hundred or one hundred fifty dollars a ten? No, no, I don't. Yeah, I, I won't do right. it. So. All right. Anything else new in your collection, Tim? No. Oh, no. okay. So my favorite crack dealer, Mitchell at MBST Pipes, calls me up and says, hey, after an episode where I showed off the vintage stuff that Iron Mike had sent me, uh, he called me up and said, hey, I've got some vintage bags of, you know, they're, they're just bags. They don't have tobacco in them. So I got another uh, genuine Durham tobacco bag. And this was mm. relatively intact. It still has. And this one is from the 30s, which is really cool. And then I got a bag of uh, Myrtle Navy smoking tobacco. You know, the, just oh, the wow. pouches in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I think is really cool. And then I got a Country Gentleman, which is very cool. And then he had some old tins of Half and Half, which I really like. The uh, You know, I just miss that, that they, you know, they don't make tins yeah, like this anymore because right. that's just right. way cooler and then he sent me a, a part of the deal was i got a sir walter raleigh uh tin yeah. which I, I i just like vintage tobacco stuff 
And then last but not least, he had a vintage Prince Albert. Uh, this was cardboard probably from, I would guess, the 60s before they started going to, you know, pouches and, and some of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And it actually has sealed tobacco in it. So at some point down the road, I'll crack that open and have a little Prince Albert. So, so the bags, you'll mat those and, and frame them? Yep. I'll put those in the... Uh, in the shadow box that I have, and, and I'll get those set mm -hmm. up, and I'll take a picture, post it to Instagram. When I get done, I can't do anything right now because I'm one-handed and pain yeah, in my ass. Right. So, Anthony at Castle Briars was working on a pipe for a while. It was a, 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 a project that he was working on, and I watched it from start to finish. This is a 40-year-old block of briar that he got from uh, someone's estate, um, and he made this Dublin, and I watched him make it, and I said, boy, if you take that to Chicago uh, or to um, the pipe show that he was going to, if that doesn't sell, um, oh, Mule Town. He took it to Mule Town. I said, if it doesn't sell yeah. at Mule Town, uh, you're, you're going to mail that right on over to me. And I'll tell you, I, I really never noticed a difference in Briar before. You know, but this 40-year-old Briar, is incredibly hard, smokes incredibly cool, just a absolutely fantastic pipe, and I love the blast on it. And I'll try to get it up. Yeah, it's really deep. It's, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at that at the show. Yeah, and just absolutely a wonderful piece of work. And you know, because Anthony and I are friends, and it's just special to get you know something like that from from Anthony. So I, I was very mm -hmm. excited to have that. And then Jason Patrick finally got a hold of me and said, hey, I'm ready to do your commission. And I have this briar, and I really like it, and here's what I came up with for you. And he posted pictures of this. And this is absolutely a wonderful, just wonderful top line, thick bowl, uh, you know, thick bowl walls. It smokes like an absolute dream. Carolina Cumberland, uh, stem material on it. It's that blue-black swirl. Uh, just mm -hmm. a gorgeous piece of work. Um, Jason did a wonderful job, and the ring grain on it is breathtaking. And I'll see if we can. Well, uh, Jim, block out the light. Here, just cram it in the camera and, and hope for the best. <laughs> kind of retarded. Okay. And then, uh, as you guys uh, may or may not know, uh, Mitchell at MBSD Pipes got in a whole collection of new old stock, and he had... He sent me pictures of a couple of Astleys, uh, which is one of the offshoots of um, Dunhill. And these are absolutely wonderful pipes. Um, I, I took both these out on their maiden voyage this past weekend, and these are both Astleys. Oh, look at that one. I like that. That's nice. Yeah, it, it's really something different. Um, and I just like the way they looked. And they came in, and they smoke absolutely fantastically. Um which is, you know, just yeah, yeah. can't can't be what that. What more can you ask? Yeah. yeah. What more can you ask? And then when Jason sent me his pipe, he also sent me this way cool JP box cutter, which is oh cool, really, really kind of handy. Just a little yeah, little box cutter. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was cool. So, and then lastly, um, our friend Iron Mike who has requested a new blend for me. And as soon as I am able to blend uh, Iron Mike, I will get that to you. <clears throat> but his brother-in-law is a leather worker. Um, and he sent me this note. says, hope all is well with you. Love watching the videos. Uh, they are like I was with you in the workroom. As promised, here's the leaf uh, for personal use. I hope you enjoy it. If anyone asks where you got the leaf, you're free to give them my email address, Panhandle West Virginia. Uh, panhandle wv leather at gmail.com and jerry sabatka is his name and he made this fantastic tobacco leaf and it's actually doubles the the stem of the leaf actually doubles as a pipe stand you can put your pipe up on it and i have what's really cool for those of you that use leather pipe trays you know having one that tapers down so you just put it back in your jar tobacco yeah, slides that's nice. And you know right. you can see the, the detail funnel. in it where he put the the ancillary stems on it. Just beautiful work. That's really Jerry cool. Did yeah, a wonderful job. So well done. 
Very nice. Very nice. Well done, Jerry. And that's uh, that's about it for me. I don't have anything else, Tim. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm tapped out. I got uh, I got nothing. Oh, all right. Time to well, get back to work. I got to get start getting. Um, I'm going to start putting uh, one by one. Um, I'll show them on Instagram and uh, post them on YouTube as I put them on the website. Okay. And uh, kind of get that up and rolling again. I'm a one man show here, you know. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. So anyway, well. Thank you all for joining us for episode 32. We will see you again shortly with Stacy for Maharin Bespoke Works so she can talk about some of the excellent leather work she does. And I'll even show off the piece that I have from her. So life's good. Very good. Have a good night, yeah. everybody. That would be a good conversation. I look mm-hmm. forward to that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, good night, Mrs. Calabash. Yeah.